From the creative and artistic minds of Nippon Ichi Studios comes another charming and emotional tale, this time embarking on the quest to become the great hero. This hand-drawn living storybook recounts the tale of the adventurous girl living with the Dragon King and his monster subjects. Are you going to be a hero and listen to this charming tale, or is it a cruel waste of your time? Well thank you to the publishing team for the review code, and now, let's find out. A fearsome dragon known as the Dragon King once ruled over the entire world, that is until he was dethroned by a young valiant hero. Not wishing to take the Demon King's life, the hero instead severed one of the Demon King's horns, the source of all his power. As the dragon lay dejected and wounded, the hero accompanied him in the days following as he healed. With each passing day, the Dragon King became less terrifying, and before they knew it, the two, once adversaries, had become friends. On one fateful day though, the hero sustained a fatal wound. He asks one final favour from his friend, the dragon, to raise his child well. The Demon King, never more sure about anything else in his life, declared that this girl would be his chance at redemption. I really like the story actually, the juxtaposition of a sweet and innocent child growing up in the depths of a dragon's lair had me invested in the events that would take place as the story continued. It's definitely an interesting and well told tale. The Cruel King and the Great Hero changes the formula up from one of the developer's previous games, The Liar Princess and the Blind Prince, which while strikingly similar in terms of art style was a puzzle platformer, here we are treated to a side scrolling RPG. From the first couple of hours playing, the game reminded me of the classic Paper Mario on the N64 in terms of humour, characters and some of the mechanics. The protagonist, named Yu, will travel on a side-scrolling plane and traverse to other sections of the biome via openings on the surrounding areas, usually shown with a yellow hue. You will travel to the monster village, which is home to different animal tribes, and there you will carry out a variety of side quests known as Acts of Kindness. Although these are not compulsory, they do add more playtime to the gameplay, as well as gaining you rewards, money and star fragments needed to unlock a collection of artwork. You will be accompanied by different characters that support you during battle, although you can only travel with one of these at a time. Their skills also help you outside of battles by digging out treasure from specific spots or floating over a windy chasm to cross to the other side. There is an element of Metroidvania adding to the gameplay to a certain extent, as the limit to number of companions mean that you will have to return with the right one in order to obtain what you need. This can become cumbersome and break the pacing of the game slightly, although some may see it as a good incentive to return to areas with the right companions and experiment. Your companions can be equipped with a weapon, armor and two accessories just like the protagonist, with these items returning to your inventory when they leave your side. Battle is triggered via random encounters and will pitch you against a number of foes at any one time. You can use your standard attacks or use energy to perform special commands, a staple of many RPGs. Your team will generate one energy point per character per round, meaning that you can then either spend these on swift commands or bank them up to unleash a stronger attack later. For the most part, the battles are enjoyable enough and you do require some attention. Enemies tend to outnumber you and although the gameplay is quite easy and straightforward, just spamming the same attacks with reckless abandon can bring up the game over screen before you know it. Pulling up the map will show your location, the different routes and where the objectives of each side quest are located. You will also be able to use pink ponds to walk to different areas at will. All of the creatures you decimate during your adventure will end up on your monster decks. As the name suggests, this is where you catalogue their location, strength, weaknesses and even what loot they drop. This money, or shells as it is known here, can be used to buy restoration items and armour and your team will learn new moves after levelling up a few times. Once you have carried out everything you could on that day, the protagonist will return to the Dragon King's cave to rest, and there the king will retell her favourite bedtime story, getting her to sleep to carry out more training and adventuring the next day. There is a lot to carry out, especially if you are a completionist. There are many badges to collect, there is artwork to uncover and citizens to help. My biggest gripe would be the constant random encounters within the game. It is of course a staple of many turn-based RPGs across the years, but eventually the random encounter fatigue definitely kicks in. This is somewhat exacerbated by only being able to travel with a single companion as I said earlier, who probably only has a few good offensive moves. It isn't a huge issue, but the ability to travel with more allies would have possibly made the game more bearable even when encountering wave after wave of enemies. 
Movement is achieved via tilting the left stick and in some but not all areas, you will start to run the more you tilt it. A slight missed opportunity would have been to have had a run button, giving the player the option to navigate the protagonist at their leisure. Having a context walk or run feature did slightly hamper the pacing. The Cruel King and the Great Hero is full of charm and will make the player grow fond of the world and its protagonist. It may be a little too simple for RPG veterans and there are a lot of random battles, but on balance, gameplay gets 16 out of 20. Controls are simple and work well, both in handheld and docked. I would have preferred a time button pressing mechanic during battles, similar again to those found in games such as Paper Mario, just to keep me fully invested during the battle sequences, however this is a personal preference, and controls also score 16 out of 20. In terms of the visuals, the hand-drawn storybook aesthetic really complements the narrative and the gameplay. The use of parallax scrolling makes both the background and foreground feel dynamic, and there is a lot of detail in every inch of the landscape, bringing this sketched out world to life. There are all kinds of creatures, big and small, populating the different biomes of this world, and some react to your approach by either fleeing or remaining in place. The Dragon King himself will follow you during her first hour or so, and you'll see him sneaking in the background. This also adds to the charm during battles when the protagonist believes she is able to invoke flames to her weapon, but it's actually the dragon assisting her with its fire breath. Hand-drawn, inked, and watercolour illustrations further add to the charm. Some story segments have been illustrated using only pencils, and it is a clever way to help distinguish them from real-time events. Even if the style isn't for you, there will be one or two elements I'm sure that will capture your attention and bring a smile to your face. Watching the protagonist express emotions in all too typical anime style is both funny and heartwarming, especially when she runs with that smile on her face. All of the monsters in the village belong to different tribes and represent anthropomorphic versions of lizards, sheep, wolves and birds. There is enough variety to distinguish them individually and enemies tend to have elemental variations which manifest according to their environment. Text size is legible overall, albeit on some occasions it's spilled out of the speech bubbles as well as there being a couple of grammatical hiccups. During my playthrough I encountered two bouts of stuttering when going in or out of combat with the latter actually crashing the game in the end, hopefully this is something that can be patched. The soundtrack has some catchy acoustic songs that I found myself enjoying quite a lot. The battle theme in particular was one of my personal favourites. There are no anime headbanging punk songs here, just a relaxing instrumental score that plays according to the context of the story. The game is voiced in Japanese which may not be to some gamers liking, but the narration is well spread out and I felt its use added to the ambience and tone of the story as it managed to add sincere emotion to the plot. The visuals and storybook theme of the game both complement and suit the gameplay massively. It's probably the strongest feature of the game and some aspects really make this world come to life. A couple of stutters and a crash do affect the score slightly, but visuals score 18 out of 20. Audio is pretty decent overall, with sound effects probably being the weakest aspect. Although this is an RPG, the game is first and foremost a fairy tale book, of which its music sets the tone accordingly, and audio gets 16 out of 20. The Cruel King and the Great Hero cost £26.99 and regional equivalents are on your screen now. There is a physical edition that includes a hardcover art book, digital soundtrack and a 15cm Great Hero plush. This can be found online from most retailers. I would say this is fairly priced considering the gameplay, the visual finesse and the care and attention that has been given. Time to completion is variable of course, as with most games in the genre, simply down to how many side quests are carried out and your skill level. Most people though are probably looking at around 12 hours plus, if not more, again as I said depending on how many side quests you take on. There is a lot of charm and polish here, although the lack of challenge may put some people off, and value scores 15 out of 20. To conclude, The Cruel King and The Great Hero is not a triple A title, but it brings a feeling of high production value and charm, albeit with a few missteps along the way. Not knowing what to expect from games is part of the fun and this one had me exploring and helping as many villagers as possible. There's plenty of badges and artwork to unlock, not to mention completely filling that monster decks. Many will find this a simple affair but it has the right mechanics, length and charm to be highly enjoyable and at least accessible for younger players. 
The developers have played it quite safe and the addition of a few more complex mechanics, specifically during battle, could have made these sections less tedious. If you love a story based RPG that doesn't necessarily outstay its welcome, this could be one to grab now or during a sale. Just don't let it fall through the cracks of the eShop as it does deserve your attention. The Cruel King and the Great Hero gets a switch up score of 81%. Thank you everybody for watching this review, I hope you enjoyed it, please do remember to leave a like if you did. This one was actually written for us by Asdin over at Grinny Wolf Games, so thank you very much to you Asdin. Please do check out his channel, there is a link to it in the top pinned comment. A quick thank you to our Patreons as always for your continued support and to each and every one of you for watching our videos. Take care and until next time, happy gaming.